Welcome back, Fan Fan. We're with John Allure, whose sister Teresa went missing in 1978, only to be found dead not far from her college campus five months later, leaving John's family with more questions than answers. Well, John enlisted the help of an investigative reporter who actually was his former girlfriend, Patricia Pearson, who would go on to write several stories in Canada's National Post, introducing research and theories that had never been shared before in the case. And Patricia Pearson joins us now from her home in Toronto, Canada. Pe Patricia, thank you so much for joining us. Um, so I would love to have met you in person, but I'm happy you're able to join us. Um, it, it, John described you, his words, you were a pretty tough cookie growing up in high school. So he said, oh, what did you call her? Hellraiser. A hellraiser. So when a hellraiser is an investigative reporter, you're going to get answers here. What made you want to, I, I know you saw the aftermath and the impact of Teresa's death on the family, but what made you want to go step further and align yourself with John? <clears throat> well, John called me in 2000, and I hadn't actually spoken to him in several years. I think I was working in my home office as a journalist. Um, I wouldn't have recognized his phone number, um, uh, but he, uh, you know, got straight to the point. And he's like, Patricia, do you remember when we were teenagers? What was said about how Teresa died? And and I remember there had been this theory about her um, dying of a drug overdose panicking friends, driving her to a creek, stripping her of all of her clothes, stealing mm. her wallet, and then going completely silent for, you know, um, all the months that his family was desperately searching for her. And I got John to send me the, um, he had an autopsy report at that point as well as some other papers. And I said, well, you know, they arrived and I, I was drinking a cup of coffee at my dining room table and looking at them and I was thinking, this doesn't make any sense, right? Mm. Like, uh, if you look at it from the point of view of Occam's razor, the idea that the simplest explanation is probably the right one, um, this was not a simple explanation that kids would be doing this. And I felt like, based on my experience at this point as a crime journalist, that this may have to do with sexual violence. And mm. so I told you, you know, we should look into this. Wow, you know, it is such an interesting journey that you both have shared. I mean, many people understand that X reaching out maybe to rekindle. Your X is reaching out for your help with something that, I mean, it's heartbreaking. Did you ever think, even as a reporter, this is too much, that you were even too close to it? Yeah, well, it's interesting, because I, at that point, had actually stepped away from crime journalism because I found it too toxic. Mm. I'd had a bit of a nervous breakdown around covering a serial killer's trial. Um, so I didn't want to go back into that area at all when John called me. But I, had, I felt like I had been so... Um, I really had not fully appreciated the grief that his family had gone through when I was a teenager living in their home or, you know, spending weekends in Teresa's bedroom. Um, I'd been disrespectful, and it seemed important to get back involved. You know, that's interesting. <clears throat> I, I don't talk a lot about it. I did a show here, Deadline Crime, for six seasons, and I took a break from that show because the weight of covering these types of stories um, just sent me into a tailspin for a while. And I only recently got comfortable going back in. For, for, for me and Patricia, um, John, it's our job, right? We're crime reporters for you. It's so much more deeply personal. It's your sister. How have you handled, because you still don't have the answers you want right now. How have you handled the weight of it? That's been a lot of struggle. I, I, I think whenever, you know, I've gone through periods where it's a, an intellectual exercise and you, I'm going to be smarter than everybody else, every other investigator. And I've gone through certainly periods where the emotion leads you, you get very, very passionate about it, and that will lead you to burnout. It's only relatively recently that I've really begun to approach this thing from my core. Um, so certainly listening to the head and the heart, but also just, just leading from gut and instinct and, and knowing when to stop and, and to, to, to back, back off from it naturally, I mean, to take a break. Well, it's interesting you said knowing when to stop because this whole show is about people not backing down. Mm -hmm. You are prepared until your last day to fight for these answers. Y yeah, there, there, is, there is that element to it. You know, that's, that's very much 
bred in the bone in me. My father is a very, was a very stubborn man. He was raised Jesuit Catholic. He had this, this ability to, he very analytical. He would take the time to analyze anything before he made a decision. Mm -hmm. And that's very much instinctually in me. Warren Zevon said I was born to rock the boat. Uh, Teresa was a rock and roller, so I always use those yeah. those terms. And that's that's me. I'm I'm in I'm in this this type of work for my sister. I'm in it for the long game. What do you hope comes out of the book? Well, I hope that that it is. Com I believe it's compelling enough that people will pick it up and, and read it. Patricia and I know the, the, the landscape of true crime and we discussed it. But beyond that, it is a story of friendship. It's a story of old growth friendships. Patricia and I have now a 40, 40 decade, or excuse me, a four decade relationship. Wow. And, 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 I, and I hope that that comes through and Teresa's personality comes through and that a reader will come to it and say, hey, you, you know, th this is marketed, it is true crime, but it's really a memoir and it's a very personal story that I think I think people will, will relate to because they've many have experienced it. Sadly, that is true. Mm -hmm. Too many have experienced this. Well, Patricia, thank you so much for your tireless work on behalf of victims, their families, and the search for answers. John, obviously, years can pass, but pain still lingers, especially when it's unanswered. So thank you so much for your bravery in writing this book and bringing Teresa's story to the public. The book again is Wish You Were Here, and we encourage anyone uh, who knows anything to always speak up on behalf of victims. Thank you, John. Thank you, Tammy.